there are several special interest groups here represented at NACAC 2021, and one in particular is represented by Rosemary Martin Edwards. Rosemary Martin Edwards, but Rosemary, I like the way that you say it, so I want you to say it in your natural tone and vernacular, please. I love it. So as I shared with you, Soledad brought up a good point, but it's Rosemary Martin Edwards. I recently married, so the Edwards is my married last name. But um, growing up, uh, my parents actually Americanized uh, my name coming here. They realized that, number one, their thick accent <laughs> was not helpful um, saying my name. So some people spelled it Rosemary, um, R-O-S-S-M-A-R-Y, <laughs> which is actually on my birth certificate. Um, I, I can't believe I'm outing myself right now <laughs> to all of NACAC. Um, so if you see my license, it's actually R-O-S-S-M-A-R-Y. And I often get that question, is this correct? Um, but in addition to that, it's actually Rosa Maria Martin Teo de Napuri, um, if you really want to dig deeper. And I'm named after the patron saint of Lima, Peru, um, which is Santa Rosa de Lima. So when Soledad was saying all of that, I was like, yes, 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 girl. <laughs> I am all about those patron saints and all of that um, because you are speaking to my heart right now. But my parents did think that, you know, it would be my life easier. Um, to Americanize my name, um, but also opportunities. They think they thought, you know, immediately job opportunities may open up for me down the road. Um, being a, an immigrant here already had enough hurdles for us, um, so they were thinking for the future. Um, but now, you know, there's a little bit of pain in all that um, because I do get a lot of questions about my license, about my birth certificate, and I do have hurdles um, in my own kind of culture and understanding of having to explain myself and why I do have an American name to some of my students um, that I work with. Um, and, you know, I do have the thousand questions when people look at me and when they see, you know, my white skin and then they see the white Americanized name. Um, and then I get the thousand questions. Oh, wait, you are Latina? Um, well, how many words do you speak in Spanish? Do you, are you fluent? Were you born there? Um, you know, are your parents still there? Or were, like, were you brought here as a child? Um, and I don't know about you, but how many times have you asked people about validating how Latina they are? Um, so I've gotten to the point where it's exhausting to answer those questions. But, but that is part of your mission. That drives you right now in the role that you are in to make sure that education that probably is not as accessible is accessible. Talk to me about that and why you are a part of this special interest group to make that happen. Sure, I think because of my own lived experiences, um, a lot of that passion, you know, grew around knowledge and understanding and helping people understand the own Latinx, Hispanic experience um, from K through 12 um, onto college and how powerful that my own experience and in translating my students' experiences and family experiences can be to others that have never experienced that but are making higher level decisions. Um, and I think that bringing community together um, definitely has a power and you know, even down to understanding that there are so many rich cultures within the Latinx and Hispanic community and if you keep noticing I'm saying Latinx and Hispanic and that right there keys into you know that there are two different vernaculars that we're using because those are two different populations and if we're not asking the right questions and we're not educating those that need to be educated at a higher level that are making impactful decisions for our own brown and black communities then we are not doing our own educational system a justice by you know helping the next generation and right now if you look at the national census data in the united states hispanic and latinx students are leading graduates and they will be the leading graduates by 2024 um, for our you know nation so therefore it's going to help our colleges and universities in their own enrollment management processes to help themselves educate themselves about our communities so that they can best serve their populations and therefore their enrollment. Great segue because what are you learning here? What mission, what lesson are you taking from NACAC 21 to help serve the community that you uh, represent? I think that what I'm learning is number one, 
I have come back and I was exhausted coming into this year. I think all of us were. Yeah. All of us were a little zoomed out and I think um, some of us, you know, continue to fight the good fight and it's been a energy booster um, to see that some of us are still here and still willing to do the good work that um, I think we fell into this profession, as some of us say. Um, but I think I'm learning that those conversations that need to be had um, at you know that higher level, or you know um, maybe even you know need to open up to be had, are possible. I think that there's a lot of people that may not understand um, all experiences, and you know there is the opportunity to have those conversations. I also think that um, helping you know individuals that may just be coming into this profession or may not understand how to use their voice is empowering. And for me, for the longest time, I didn't know how to use my voice and how powerful it was. I also didn't understand how knowledge was power. And that's where I think I've gained my strength is understanding that empowering people to use the knowledge they have is the voice. Yeah. And understanding that that is your voice. And if we can band together and I guess not work harder but smarter because we are a community unido jamás será vencido a community united shall not be defeated is the power that we have because we are the voice and we are here for the future of our students and if we unite to say hey this is a red flag for us do you understand that students from Puerto Rico are citizens they learn in a bilingual community of you know having an English curriculum and a Spanish curriculum. Therefore, if they're being flagged for a TOEFL at an institution, let's talk about that. Let's open up that line of communication because maybe that's not necessary. That's an additional barrier and that's a costly barrier for them. And those are students that are eligible for Pell Grants, for financial aid, for all of these opportunities. So not only is it gonna benefit the institution and their diversity numbers, but that's access barriers for those students. So those are the type of conversations that we wanna have. It's not us versus you. It is a conversation of student access and opportunity. And that's where I think, you know, um, coming back from the pandemic, I think that you know, be, being behind a screen created a lot of shifts in conversations and being back at NACAC has revitalized the opportunity to be in front of people and have the opportunity to have conversations. Well, we certainly feel your passion um, and that's uh, key to what needs to be done with the work here. So thank you so much for representing. Thank you for finding your voice and using your voice and empowering others to do the same. So thank you very much for being here, Rosemarie. Thank you so much. Si se puede. Let's keep fighting the good fight, guys.